It's been more than 50 years since the last human landing mission on the moon in 1972. There has not been anyone capable of doing that again. That's what NASA's Artemis must do. SpaceX and HLS Starship will have the honor of continuing that unfinished story in 1972 through the Artemis III program. Accordingly, the company began early development of the lunar lander and engine testing for that vehicle. Is the lunar starship ready to land on the moon with new engines? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Aiming for Artemis III, expected in late 2025 or even 2026, SpaceX has been in early preparation. Indeed, in early August, we saw the appearance of nose cones labeled HLS short for human landing system that SpaceX must develop under contract with NASA serving Artemis III. In addition, it was later painted with a layer of white, making it similar to the lunar lander's nose cone. Those strong confirmations suggest that the object was most likely used as a Starship HLS article. However, to date, detailed information surrounding it has not been announced. Besides that, in early September, we witnessed the movement of Ship 26, equipped with six engines from the rocket garden to the launch site. At the time I did this report, it was located at suborbital site B in anticipation of some static fire testing. One thing worth noting here is that it looked naked, meaning there were no flaps, no payload door, or heat tiles. Honestly, we do not know precisely what is used for. Some have speculated that this could be a simplified version of the Starship tanker, which will perform the propellant transfer practice in orbit in preparation for the Artemis program. It makes sense. The lack of four flaps and a heat shield means the vehicle is an expendable vehicle, but it is not for transporting goods because it lacks a cargo door. It is likely to be used in Artemis as a tanker while the white nose cone above serves as a lander. Thanks to that news, we realized that work on the Starship HLS variant has progressed to certain stages. In addition, as you know, no matter how modern a rocket is, it will never leave the ground and reach orbit without a powerful and reliable engine group. So last month, SpaceX tested one of its lunar lander engines while simulating the frigid temperatures of space. The results of the test were highly appreciated by NASA writing on its website on September 14. They said through a test that successfully confirmed the engine can be started in the extreme cold conditions resulting from extended time in space. But why test the engine at such low temperatures? Unlike other spacecraft, SpaceX's Starship human landing system will sit in space for a while without being fired. This would cause the temperatures of its hardware to drop to a lower level than if it were to complete a short mission to low Earth orbit. Of course, this is not the first time the public has witnessed the performance of the Starship Raptor engine in simulated lunar conditions. In November 2021, the engine was tested for its ability to perform a descent burn to land on the surface of the moon. The test lasted for 281 seconds, and this satisfied NASA. Raptor demonstrated the powered descent portion of the mission when the Starship human landing system leaves its orbit over the lunar surface and begins its descent to the moon's surface to land, NASA wrote. In summary, we can see that preparations for Artemis of SpaceX appear to be going smoothly. This puts their lunar starship with its engine closer to its operational stage to fly in Artemis III. Before Starship HLS can land humans on the moon, however, Starship has to fly to orbit first. In fact, it's not easy to do that. SpaceX's giant vehicle is still in development and has only flown once in April. Elon Musk and his colleagues have made every effort to help it qualify to fly for the second time in the third quarter of 2023 but an unexpected chain of events could dash all their hopes. It all started with the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration conducting an investigation at the end of April into the impact of Starship's first flight explosion on the surrounding environment. They then came up with a list that included 63 corrective actions that SpaceX needed to take to get clearance for a second launch. The next flight could have been approved by the FAA after the agency completed its investigation into what went wrong in Starship's first test. But there's another obstacle at play. It's about the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, or FWS for short. Given that, the FAA requested a consultation with the agency under the Endangered Species Act. Accordingly, FWS wants to review the impact of construction activities at Starbase after April including the new update called the Water Deluge System on the surrounding site, and it will take 30 to 135 days or even more to complete. The problem here is that they have not started anything yet, 
while for Elon Musk every minute is as precious as gold. That made Elon extremely angry. You can see that through his recent reactions on social platforms. This makes sense, because the FWSE's slowness will likely hold up Starship's second launch until next year. And that concerns not only Elon Musk, but also NASA. In June, NASA expressed their worries about the fact that SpaceX's Starship could delay humanity's return to the moon, given that they are still waiting for the company's lander to be ready to land on the lunar surface under the direction of Artemis III. According to Jim Free, NASA's Deputy Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, the mission Artemis III will likely be pushed back to 2026 instead of 2025. The fact that FWS also investigated with the FAA, but they acted too slowly, makes the situation more serious, saying that Artemis III could even be delayed until mid-2026 or more, not the beginning of the year as NASA predicted. Why is NASA worried about the risk of Artemis III delay? First of all, to get that mission done, there are several launches, and some of them even are done before Starship HLS will. The day SpaceX has to launch their vehicle will come sooner than we think. As you know, each Starship lunar lander on its mission will need several Starship tankers to refuel it in Earth orbit before reaching the moon. Additionally, before Artemis III, SpaceX will perform an uncrewed Starship moon landing and must also demonstrate its ability to transport cryogenic liquids in Earth orbit. NASA is so cautious that it won't perform a critical design review of SpaceX's lander unless the company completes a demonstration of cryogenic refueling of the vehicle in Earth orbit. Obviously, the agency has an alternative which is Blue Orange Blue Moon, but it won't be ready until Artemis V in 2029 is scheduled. Not only Artemis III, but NASA is also on a tight timeline for the other parts of the Artemis program. That comes from fearing China may take the lead in landing on the moon. Another reason is that the agency has recently had to rely on commercial companies because their SLS has been inefficient. We have heard many times that this outdated type of vehicle costs a lot of money for each launch and repair, often has technical problems, and each time it breaks down, it takes a lot of time for this agency to explain to Congress. To save time and money, they have to look for famous private partners with cheaper and more modern vehicles, such as SpaceX, although that may come with things that are out of the control of this space agency. It's safe to say that NASA really needs Starship at this time. So we also believe that this department will use its influence to push FWS to do things faster. Besides, SpaceX has made the necessary preparations for the next launch. Once the license is granted, we will have the opportunity to witness Starship flying in the sky soon. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.